Hello everyone, and welcome to a new series on the channel, Arden 44. Now we're going to be playing through this all the way, um, no quitting, because there's multiple victory conditions from both sides, and this is going to be fun. Um, this is actually the first wargaming game I ever played, um, at least the first game I ever played in person on an actual board. It's the first one I owned. And I'm really excited. Um, now, I don't have the equipment to actually record it on my... I don't even really have the room to play it. Because this map is doesn't look that big on here. But it is massive in real life. It'll take up like a full-sized coffee table. Or dining table. But anyway, basically, this game simulates the Germans attacking in the Battle of the Bulge not just the Germans attacking, it simulates all of the Battle of the Bulge. The Germans, the gray and blue counters down here are going to be trying, their main goal is to get across the Meuse. This big river, it's the biggest river on the map. They gotta get across there. They've got to capture as many, see these hexes with the stars on them? They have to capture as many of those as they can. And um, the most difficult objective, they've got to get units off the map and into this Antwerp box, which is simulating units exiting the map to go to Antwerp. So as you can see, German exit hexes right there. And actually, that's the only one, it seems. No, F and G. So they can go through all of the F and G ones. But um, yeah, that's their main objective. Now the Americans, their main objective is the exact opposite. They have to hold the Germans back at all costs. Now, um, eventually, they'll be getting reinforcements through um, all these outside hexes. And eventually, they will be counterattacking the Germans most likely rather than just defending so at that point once mid and late game hits it'll be up to the Germans to try to hold as much ground as possible um, if they haven't gotten across the Meuse yet if they can do that and they hold enough of these VIP, um, VP points then it'll end in a draw but um, yeah I'm really looking forward to this now let's get started here no more dilly dallying so we've got three army groups here. Um, I can't remember what any of them are called now that I think about it. Um, let's see, here it is. We've got 7th Army, which is mostly infantry. They're probably the worst of our forces. So we're going to use them to try and just hold the flank for the Germans while they push hard along this area here I'll back up a little bit so you can see better so anyway there's dotted lines here to show um, where the armies are they're not allowed to actually go over those lines at the beginning for a couple turns but anyway so these guys over here behind this dotted line are gonna all these places with the um, with the little numbers right here the B, the C, um, the D, those are all places allies can come in, their reinforcements can come in. And if one of these is blocked off by German units, then no units, no reinforcement units can come in on that entire area. Um, everything under basically this box nothing can come in so it's really important that the Germans take those and that the Allies hold those so that's going to be their objective they're going to try to hold these spaces as much as they can um, to limit the Allied reinforcements which will allow um, army group what group is this? 5th Panzer Army which will allow 5th Panzer Army to push push into Bastogne, which is a major victory objective, and then hopefully push up 
here up to the um, top of the muse so that will be their objective um, and then we've got they, they have a pretty decent force they've got a large mix of tanks and decent infantry that's not all a lot of them are fresh and green infantry but not all of them not as many as these ones are but then we have our most elite army the sixth panzer army which is where all of the best german units are um, they've got their ss units which can't move on turn one most of them um, and then they've got a lot of pretty good infantry but it's also one of the arguably toughest places to push through there are a lot of allied units and heavy strength allied units are over here so their objective is going to be try to to try and bypass as much of the heavy strength allied units as they can and get their panzers on the road and try to get them up here as soon as they can across the river into liege and yeah so that's going to be their main objective and hopefully the German player will be able to do that. Now, this game doesn't have any hidden information, so it's perfectly good to play solitaire as long as you truly give it your best on each side. So, let's get going. Let's get going. Um, we'll start the attack. So to start off, I'll show you how the actual attack um, works. So when you're attacking across a river without a bridge, these are all these explosion markers are where bridges are but they're destroyed right now so when you attack across the river without a bridge you take a you half your attacking strength so let's see we're going to attack with actually i oh i could um set up these units a little bit differently it's all right it's all right i already started there's ways to make your unit positioning a little bit better but I won't worry about that right now we're just gonna get right into it so one unit can enter this hex for free on turn one that's not normally something that's allowed because of something called um, hex bonds but I'll explain those later um, so anyway these two are going to attack him with this artillery help actually um, I almost forgot you can't just start off doing that right away this turn track basically describes everything you can do in one turn so all of our stuff is supplied already we've got our bridges uh, we can't fix any of them yet those two I think have to stay like that on turn one so anyway movement phase so we've got our movement phase so this one can move there he could move across that river let's see what's in this space yeah we're gonna move all of them across Now the most units can stack is three units. It's three units high. So we'll move all three of those right there. We'll move him right there. Let's see. I don't want to move him in here because attacking strength these are basically like heavily wooded valleys and attacking out of those also halves your attacking strength so not a great place to go so let's move the other portions of the 276 right there um, the 357 the 352nd that's a division by the way 
So these are all divisions that we're moving. So we'll move there. We're actually going to move that unit right there. Oh, you know what? I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm doing this wrong. Um, oh, man. I've been playing too many other games. <laughs> I'm getting confused with the different rule sets. Um, you're only allowed to have a max of three on these steps right here. So, for example, these three, these two can stack together, and then the tanks um, don't really count towards that. So anyway, those two can go together, but that's right, that's right. Okay, now I'm doing it right. So in that case, Let's keep him right there. Generally, there was one right here. I think it was him. He was over there. So we'll just keep this guy right there. Anyway, let's make sure we didn't make that mistake anywhere else. Oh, we did. Okay. Oh, yeah. He must have been over here. So place him right there. Yeah, those two did the same thing. Hmm. I'll leave him there. He's not allowed to move. He's going to go right there. And he's going to move like so. Um, by the way, with your movement, you can either do your full movement, which is always this last number, um, modified by terrain. So this is your terrain modifiers. So as you can see in clear, you can move one movement point um, per clear, which is really good. That's like the base base movement. But then say um, forest, it takes two movement to move for a non-mechanized unit to move through the forest. So in that case, I wanted to move him here. It would be like one actually that's not a good example because he's in a river if I wanted to move him here that's also not a good example anyway anyway um, sometimes it's better to use the other type of movement which is called tactical movement for example if you're crossing a river that's gonna take up all your movement so where you're only allowed to use up you're only allowed to move one tile but if you do a tactical move and you start next to the river you can go two because tactical is always two so you always have have a choice of going two movement so we did that there who is this okay he's not allowed to move we're gonna move our tank right there and Move our artillery right there. Now these are, um, we'll actually move him right there. These are rocket artillery, so they only have a attack of two, of two spaces. So we have to make sure they're pretty close. Well, this artillery is regular artillery. So they have four space attacks. So he could attack this guy if he wanted to as well. So that's the movement done for all of these units. Not, one of the nice things about Vassal, which is the program I'm using, is it actually keeps track of your um, units that you've moved. But anyway, let's start moving these guys. We'll move these Grens right there. One, two. 
I think they can move through light woods fine. Yeah, they can. Um, so here's a good rule to point out. So see how these two are next to each other? They're creating something called a bond. And whenever units are spaced out like two, then it's it basically there's a barrier right here. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't put him right there. Um, likewise, these two units are together. There's a hex side, I think that's what it's called, a hex side bond. This line right here, it's the same thing. I couldn't go move a unit like that through them. So anyway, um, hmm. I might, let's see, are these all tanks? No. That bridge isn't fully repaired yet. I think mechanized infantry can cross, but not the tanks. Yeah, mechanized infantry can cross with tactical movement. Um, these are scouts, so they can't cross. So, one. Who is in here? Another mechanized. You can only move, I think, one through wooded rough. No, no, you can go through it. Oh, but no, since we moved into their um, zone of control, you probably know what zone of control is if you've played war games before. But we've moved into their zone of control, and you're not allowed to move again once you've done that. So they're going to be stuck right there. Hmm. So this is going to have an attack strength of 8. So it's going to be roughly 2 to 1. Same with that one, I think. Let me check. Yeah. Now how about... There's no other units that can move? No. Are there any other little roads I can take through here? Not yet. All right, so that's all we can move here. These guys are good right here because we're going to be attacking them. I am actually going to... Wait, who's here? Oh, okay, yeah. Hmm... So at eight, attacking four, because these little dots right here are villages, and they give a plus two to defense. These are like foxholes or fortifications, so they do the same thing. They are basically like being inside a village. Let's push right here I think hmm because it's more imperative we get through here I think because we really want to capture St. Vith as fast as we can So we'll throw this unit right here, Get some tactical movement.
tanks. Can you move through light woods? I think you can. It's heavy woods they're not allowed to move through. Actually, no, it's... Oh, wait, no, yeah, yeah, they can move with three. So. They move there. That's free because there's a road. But then if I move them there, it'd be four, four movement, which they can do. So we'll move them there. With this tank unit, um, I think... We're gonna move all of them right there. It's open so they can move there fine. And then we've got these, we've got these as well. I'm gonna move them like that. None of those can move yet. So we can't move through there because of that bond. We can move right here though. So they're just in light forest. So we're going to send one right there. And then we're going to stack these two. And then we'll put our tank here as well. By the way, on these roads, these are like highways. So we can move our tanks double their movement. So that six, we can turn it into 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, easily make it there. And we're gonna move them, one, two, We're going to move our flak right there. And we'll keep this unit right there as well. They're going to hold these guys. We're going to try to pocket them. Now, that's all of the units over there. By the way, artillery has to stay on roads. I believe they're counted as vehicles so they could go off-road if they have German artillery doesn't have any movement except for these um, Volkswerfers which can move one except when using these things and I'll explain that rule uh, next episode when it comes up but essentially they can't really move but we'll move these guys right there. And we're gonna move the rest of the 18th. One, two, three, one, Infantry don't get that double movement on these, by the way. But anyway, that's one. And then, yeah, we'll throw him right here. So take out that artillery if we can. Okay, that's all for movement there. Next, we have these two. They can't even move, so they'll stay there. 
These fusiliers can't move through there, so they'll stay there. Yeah, pretty much all of these units are going to stay where they are. Because these are all 2-2-2 two, two, two units. Except for this one. And then these ones are elite units. They have special rules attached to them. But my goal here is once I break through here, I'm going to send all of these guys up this direction, and then we're going to pocket these guys. We're not even going to. I've made the mistake of coming up this way in the past and trying to capture them and just brute force my way through here, but they get reinforcements way too fast. So. Yeah, I think that's good for our movement. Yeah, and these guys can stay. They're on their defensive wall. This thing right here is like a wall of fortifications, basically. So they'll be safe. And these guys are in a heavy forest and have that wall. Not that you don't stack defensive bonuses, but they'll be safe too. So, yes, perfect. That is our movement phase finished. Let's check that down. There haven't been any units that have been in combat, so there won't need to be a rally. I'm just taking a nice sip of coffee. Now we've got our battle phase our combat phase this is where the game gets interesting and control goes to the die gods so we've got let's see where do we want to delegate these units to their attacks at this is four and then plus two six this will be six to four because our snack is a um yeah that's a these are all regiments by the way I didn't realize that they're not even oh duh 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 okay I'm stupid um, regiments and battalions I think but anyway anyway um yeah so these are going to be attacking him. Now, I wish there were HQs in this. That would be pretty cool. But so four, five, six, and then I think we'll use these fusiliers. Seven, eight. So that gives us a two to one. The way combat works in this game. Go over here. It's all by odds. So we have eight strength to their four strength right now. So that gives us two to one odds. And then we're gonna use this artillery to bombard them, which is gonna give us three to one odds. We wanna roll one and low. We wanna roll low. So, hey, I didn't, by the way, sometimes my mouse double clicks, so. I'm just gonna, if it does that, I'll always pick the first one. But anyway, we picked a, we got a one. So, a three one is a DR three, which as you can see, the defender must retreat three hexes and they're broken. So then the defender, now we're acting as the Americans, We'll get to choose basically where they would retreat to just off of their own um, two, three, probably right there. Off of their own initiative. So they're broken. It's not good. I think as the American player, I'm going to have these guys retreat right here. And try to hold that for as long as they can. So good. And then all of these units get a bonus advance. 
which means they get to advance two hexes. So, flip that. That is now German controlled. Yeah, there you go. Here's some more stuff we'll be using, but anyway. We'll move them one, two, oh, you know, what? I think it's two movement points, not two hexes, uh oh, did my game just freeze, oh, there it goes, okay. I think it's two movement points, not two hexes. So, I'll actually do this. Or, I'll have to check that rule really quick. I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Um, it is hexes, but there was a special rule. Infantry can only advance into forests, which is what this is if it's their first move. So I guess they're only allowed to um, advance into one hex of forest. Because then their second move, they wouldn't be allowed to advance into another. So I think we'll do this then. And then with this one, one, two, yeah, and then we'll advance these guys. Oh, did not mean to move all of them. There we go. We'll advance them. If I did that, I could go, I'd probably just put them here then. All right, that's our first move. Ultimately, these guys are gonna try to take these two. 212th. Next, we have these units. So they've got eight strength against the enemies. Four, yeah, because that's a village. The village of Burdorf. Um, so, oh, we almost forgot to flip these guys. There we go. Yeah, flip, they're only allowed to fire once each turn. Um, so, four, eight, two to one. Once we flip that, it'll be three to one odds. So let's roll that dice. Three. Three to one. Three, firefight. Now, Firefight is a special rule where it basically goes to another dice roll, and you have to pick a unit to do it. So, Firefight. One to three is basically decent rolls. Four to six are all, or three to four are like medium okay one and two is what you really want and then five and six five i've found is actually not that bad six is bad you don't want to get a six so i'm going to do that with this unit because you don't want to do it with that little white outline around the defense strength right there means the unit is um is green and they get negative modifiers so we're going to do firefight oh and we rolled a one awesome that means D1 under firefight table, they lose a step, and I think they're killed now. Yep, they don't have another step, so they're eliminated. And do we get, we get regular advance, so one hex. That means we're gonna do this. I'm actually gonna send these guys right there we can go in there since our it's our first hex 
All right. Now, now we have to choose which space we want to attack into because our artillery can only support one attack. Either do this one or this one. I think we'd have three, four, five. We'd have five strength against their four right there. So ultimately with our artillery it would be two, one. Or we could do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They'd have they're a two strength unit. So two plus two, four. So we'd already have um, so four, four, eight. We'd have two and then we get this, it'd be three to one, I think. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So it'd be ten to four. Yeah. Okay, it's late. I'm not thinking very well. So ultimately we'd have three to one. So I think we want to attack this guy instead. So let's do it. We'll flip for attack. And then another three, which is gonna be a fire fight. As you can see right here. Same one we rolled last time. I think we're gonna attack with one of these three. Probably these ones. Rolled a three on the firefight table. Attacker one, defender one. So we take a step loss. And they don't have another step, so they're dead. And then on the attacker one, defender one, the attacker receives a regular advance. So all four of these units can now advance one, which is good. So we're going to advance them right there. That'll allow them to move in next turn. Maybe even cut these guys off, which will be good. We'll move. Oh, you know what? We could actually do that right now. Mm, we should try to keep these guys all together. Them right there. Put them across the river and... Four. Hmm. I'll actually put them across right there. You never know if they'll end up holding out. So that's that attack done. Here is our last attack of the 7th Army. So, so far they've all gone pretty well. So they're not allowed to move that 5th... Um, FJ something Jaegers I think I can't remember what the thing is but we'll have three four five six seven eight nine ten against their four so two one usually the tanks would give us another bonus but since they're across the river they don't so ultimately it'll just be a three one so let's flip that Another three on a three one firefight. Ooh. Um it's either we take a plus one penalty, which is bad if we use one of our infantry, or we risk our stugs. Mm. I think I'm going to risk our stugs because we don't want that plus one. Four. Oh, I don't think that's good. Oh, you know what? Actually, that might be all right. 
Oh, no, that wasn't all right. Attacker one, DR two. So the Stugs get taken out. And they're going to get retreated. One, two hexes. Now in retreat, hexes don't really um, cause any, you don't count trade modifiers during retreats. So during attack one DR two, attacker receives regular advance. So he's not allowed to move, but he is. So he's gonna go right there. That's gonna force this disrupted unit to run away even further, which is awesome. So perfect, that's all of this army. We lost our only tank unit, <laughs> which it's all right, I guess. And then over here, hmm. I think five, six, seven, eight. So that's 2 1. No, I think we'll need that right there. Hmm. Or we use that right there. We might need both of them to get 3 1 odds. I think we're going to use both of these on this because we need these guys to push across the river and secure this um, bridgehead so our tanks can push across. So let's do that. These two aren't going to attack. These are going to attack 3 6 and then. So really it'd be one to one odds because these are four, be six to four because of their stationing in a village. But then these two are both going to fire, pushing it to three to one odds. Oh, it wasn't enough. None of them were, oh, you know what? They are elite though. Oh wait, did, I don't think that, I don't think that does anything. That's only in firefight. So six, that means they're just engaged. Not good, that was a waste. We can't move here. So we have to move either this way or push them out. So engaged basically means they're not allowed to move unless they try to disengage um, until their combat. So it's, I mean, it's not horrible if you're trying to get units that are trying to run away, but, but anyway, let's move on. We've got four, eight. Hmm. Eight, four, and then I think the thing is they're already protecting this crossing right here. So Even if we knock them back, we're still gonna have to cross that one. So I don't think I'm gonna use my artillery. I'm not gonna attack this one, I think.
I'm going to save my artillery for attacking across here because this bridge is intact. We need this bridge if we want to push our people across it. Uh, this bridge has a chance, has a pretty high chance of basically being blown the first time we try to use it. So that's really not worth spending a bunch of artillery attacking. So these ones are going to 510. So that's two to one odds. Okay, so there are four. And then the tank is actually going to give us three to one odds because they don't have tanks there. So we'll take that and then we'll save our two artillery for that. Awesome. It was enough to cause them to retreat. So they run away three hexes. One, two, three. They are broken. All right. Now they get a bonus advance. Not that we can really use it, but I think we're going to move them right there, just in case this attack fails. So we've got 5, 10, 11, 12, 13 going up against their 6. We've got an extra strong unit holding right there. So 6. So we've got 2 to 1. The tanks aren't able to actually use their advantage because we're attacking into forest. So 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1. So with 4 to 1 odds. Oh crap. Firefight plus 1. So we'll actually do it. We'll use these. Oh wait, no, we don't have to use our tanks because we didn't get a, um, we'll use these guys because they're elite. So that'll cancel out the plus one. So firefight table, come on, four to four. Um, that's attacker one, defender. So these guys are going to take a step loss. And these defenders are going, they would normally run away too, by the way. These guys can't, no one except for um, these artillery units are allowed to fire um, for the Americans on turn one. But anyway, because it's like it was a surprise attack. So anyway, these guys are going to do something called a desperate defense because they really don't want these tanks pushing across this bridge right now. So a desperate a, in a desperate defense, they are ooh they are fresh and. Or green, green, I should say. We would only get a regular defense, although it's not like they have any other forces that can. Maybe these ones, though. Hmm. As the American. Player. I'm trying to figure out what I should do about this. So now that I look at it, they don't actually have any reinforcements that can reach this bridge in time. If um, if they fail there, or if they were to just retreat. Yeah, they're going to do a desperate defense. So in that, they are going to roll on, or determined defense, I guess it's called. They roll, um, and basically, 
what they roll tells them if they can stay in that hex or not regardless of the outcome oh and they rolled a one. Oh, that's really good for them one and then it turns into a two because the unit is green but then the hex is a plus two so it goes down to a zero which inflicts a loss on the enemy and on themselves they trade but um, anyway it would be normally it would be on um, any unit I believe in an attack um, that the attacker chooses but in this case because it was the um, the attack, it was the firefight, um, I believe it has to be the unit that actually attacked in the firefight. So these guys, that would mean these guys are eliminated. I did that right, right? There were only two units there? Yeah. And they now only have one step left. So they held, but at a. They held, but they lost a lot of men doing so at a steep cost, I was going to say. So 4, 8, 9, 10. So these guys are going to attack these guys at 4, and then these tanks. So it's a two to one, then the tanks make it three to one. It's important they win here. So I'm going to use this artillery to make it four to one. Oh, another six. That's a firefight plus one. Um, we're going to use these tank destroyers to do the firefight, a three, then turns into a four because of the firefight, attacker one, it would, okay, attacker one, defender, retreats two. So they're eliminated. It's only a step though, so we could always bring them back during one of our, um, one of our reinforcements. There's some pretty good tank destroyers, so I, I might do that. And then these have to run two. They're only one step, so they'll do it. Which means this thing will have to be abandoned. The fortifications. One, two. disrupted. Now these guys will get a regular advance. And then let's see over here we've got four eight nine against their two Four. Hmm. We're actually gonna leave this one alone. But we will be carrying this attack out because this guy's gonna basically flank this whole area pretty soon. And these guys are all actually gonna be, um, out of supply in a second. So we've got four, five, six, seven against two. So two, four, six, three. So it's three so far. And then the tank adds another one. So it's a four to one. 
Ooh, they rolled a two. So they retreat three. And these guys don't retreat, so they get eliminated. That's really good for um, the axis. That's really good, because any allied artillery they can kill off is really good for them. So with that, uh, they do get a bonus advance. So I think the tanks are actually going to go one. Oh, and they can't go that direction. That. Oh, wait. Oh, that's right. So the tanks are going to go one. And then because they're on this road now, they'll get to go twice that. So they're very close to taking St. Vith, which is really good. And they're going to go and take that. Now this unit is exerting zone of control right here. So this unit, oh, he wouldn't be able to get supply out of that way anyway, because he's got zone of control of these hexes. So yeah, these guys are well and truly cut off. Now, time for the rest of the Axis move. We've got these two. Nine. Nine against two. Ooh, these are recon, too. So, nine against four. So, really, it's a... Two to one, I believe. Now I'd like to attack this one with these three. So this one can help with this attack. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, twelve, thirteen. So and since that's only four. 12, it's a 3 to 1 already. Which is actually... More than enough. So I might as well save this artillery for... Um, maybe this attack? Yeah. 3 to 1. Ooh, five. FF plus one. I'll use these guys since they're firefight. Oh, a six. That's not good. That's actually really, really bad. That's the worst roll you can get. Um, so we take damage, and it's just gauged. These guys take a step loss. That's bad. All right. Well, maybe we can break through right here then. So, four, eight. And it's there. We've got two to one. I'll actually contribute these guys to maybe this attack. Just this Fusilier unit. These guys will be attacking him. Eight, two, one, three, one, and then four, one. So let's flip these two. So these guys attack them. Four to one. Two. Ooh, that's good. Dr. Three. So these guys are gonna retreat. Three hexes. There we go. And they're broken. Still a, um, a, whatchamacallit, a hex. 
actually no when when you get a combat that's one of the only ways you can move through these types of hexes is when you get um a combat or a um advance after combat so in that case we're going to move come on there we go him up so now we're breaking that bond fire both of those good and then let's see I think we're also going to attack them right here for eight they've got two which turns into four so it'll end up being the same odds because we're using the same um same thing so it'll be four to one odds on these guys five that's not good ex actually we'll take that so one of these units is going to take some casualties but then they'll also get eliminated and these units get to um advance so they'll go there and I'll actually move him right there eventually I'd like to move that other guy back over perfect broke through there a little bit now over here we're not going to attack at, at, at all because this is a city that gives plus three defense so these guys would have six defense and with these artillery units able to support him against just eight and then with two artillery units so it'd be one to one and two three and then like two with that so they're just gonna hold we want to encircle these guys not push through super quickly so with that that is the combat phase done now we'll finish the German turn up really quick and we'll do the American turn really quick turns aren't usually gonna last this long because I had to explain a lot at the beginning of the episode but um in the future they'll be a lot not a lot shorter but they'll be a bit shorter now the Germans don't get to use their traffic markers yet Um, I'm going to check and see. I'm going to use the roadblock rules. So I'm going to see when they get to start to use those. I haven't used those before, so I'll be right back. Alrighty, we're back. Um, I looked really quick. The Germans don't receive them until turn three when they receive the rest of their um, grief counters as well. So um, we don't have to worry about that. So we'll just skip that. And then supply and surrender. No German units are out of supply, I believe. Just gonna check that just to make sure, but I'm like 99% certain. Yeah. Yeah, no German units are out of supply. So they're all good in that aspect. Okie dokie. Now it's going to be allied turn. So let's go to the turn rec record chart. Here we go. Flip. Allied turn. Their artillery supply phase. Um, they don't 
do that because none of their units have fired. Now the bridge phase, they can't blow bridges right now. So it's just movement right now. So this will be pretty easy. I think for the allies on this left side, I think we want to form a line at this river and along these. So that's what we'll do there. Over here, I say try to hold them off around this area as long as we can in the army group center. That's just what I'll call them. We want to hold the 5th Panzer Army off at this river as long as we can. We actually, we also want to get these guys. Oh, we can't move them yet. That's frustrating. So anyway, and then over here in 6th Panzer Army, I think I think we want to pull this unit back. Cut this unit off with a um with a bond. And then I think this unit we pull back and this unit we pull back to like right here as well. We want to form a defensive line basically like right here. So we don't want these guys to be enveloped, especially these really big units right here. So that'll be our objectives. So over here, let's carry those objectives out. We'll get that unit right there. This unit will move its two allotted moves back here. Eventually they're going to occupy this space. Got some armor right here. Um, these guys, we can only move one space because we'll moving, we'll be moving right into their zone of control. So I think we move them right here, where we'll, where we'll have a little bit better um, cover, and then we don't want to keep them right there as well, actually. You know, we'll keep them here for now. Keep these guys from getting completely enveloped because we eventually want them to pull back. These two units can cover that area right now. I think... Okay. These guys need to move back here, I think. They'll sit right here. I think that's everyone in this zone. Yeah, this unit will be difficult to attack because it'll have a strength of six sitting right there and it's armor. So there's no armor on this side. So the infantry will get a major disadvantage attacking it. So perfect. Uh, do we have any extra units in that zone 
that we can move over? Not really. Not really. Over here. Mm. Let's get our armor in here. Uh, this unit is going to get rid of that engaged marker. So they're not going to be trying to move. And then these units are going to be severely disadvantaged trying to attack these guys since they'll have armor. This unit will move to occupy that city so it's not taken by accident. These guys will remain right there so this hex is impassable. We could move this unit right here. We're actually going to do that. I don't think they can get into that city because they were right there. And if they go one, two, three, four, oh no, they wouldn't be able to do that. Infantry can move five turns or five movement places if they aren't going to run into the zone of control of any of their enemies. But if they're attacked, they'll receive a debuff. But they'd have to go. Oh, wait, no, because they can move there for free. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so let's do that. That way, this now has zone of control as well. And then so does... Oh, you know what? I, I wonder if this doesn't create zone of control right there because of this. I don't think it does. Well, we'll, meet, we'll move these guys to join up with them. Any other units over here? None we can move right now. All right, over here. Um, I think we ditch that and we throw these guys back here. Cause then they'll be halved, attacking. They won't get their bonus. Oh, you know what? They will because they're um. Maybe we keep them right there then. No, we'll hold that. Because we want to hold it until we can blow it. We'll move these guys back one. Mm. We'll keep them right there. Actually, I'm worried about this. No, these guys can go right there, I think. They can go right there. I basically stop it from getting attacked. So they'll stay. In that case, these guys will go right there where they'll lose their disrupted marker in a second and they'll be able to defend that bridge. One Two, one, two, three, 
Move them right there. Now they're helping protect against that guy. And then you you are going to move into those woods and do tactical movement to go right there and eventually you'll join up with them so they're now back in supply all these units aren't allowed to move Now this unit let's say we move them right there to help support that attack and then excuse me Like I said, this unit moves back there. This unit moves right there. So we'll move them. Oh wait, we can't move them too. We have to put them right there. And this unit is actually gonna stack on them yeah that's gonna create a strong barrier because they can't go through here because of this unit and they can't go through there because of that unit so really this is probably the weakest area and then these oh these guys will remove that I think we should remove that as well and then stack him. Alrighty. No other units you want to move over here. So perfect. We'll get the rally phase going really quick. Should be quick. So during this phase, you basically just reduce all of your disrupted units to no longer disrupted. Your broken units you turn into disrupted, which is you'd rather have a disrupted unit than a broken unit. So I can explain those rules if you don't know later. Once it actually, once the consequences of having those units comes up. Take this unit, remove the disruption. Take that unit, remove the broken and turn it into disruption. Um, same thing with this unit. And I think that's everyone. Perfect. Now combat. Is there anywhere we would want to attack right now? I don't think so. All of our units are pretty weak to start out. And the Germans all have pretty high defensive strength. Yeah, nowhere I would recommend attacking right now. Let's make sure there's no leftover allied units behind their lines that we haven't moved. I don't think so. All right. Now it's traffic marker phase. So the allies will now place something called traffic markers in German lines. So 
let's first check where German units are going to get reinforcements from the next couple turns. Lots of K, mostly K. So, probably want to throw them over here. I think the first one goes right here. I'm actually going to place it under these guys. Second one. You want to disrupt these guys. So I think we'll place a few over here. One. Two. Three, and then maybe one right there and right there because those are the two bridges they can cross right now. There we go. And now we have to roll a dice and see which two come up. Okay, so this one returns the holding because that was number five. And then number three. Four. Three. Alrighty. So that's how those work. Now supply and surrender. So now we check for supply. As far as I know, I think there's only three units that are out of supply right now. These three. This unit looks like he could be out of supply. Actually, no, because this tile isn't even taken up. And it can go up through there. But also, this tile, even though his zone of control looks like it's controlling it, there's a zone of control bond right here between these two allied units. So he, in fact, does not control that tile. But anyway, so these three. Now I believe there's a line of communication to either him or him. Four hexes, I believe. I'll check that out really quick. All right, so the rules state that a line of communication is like a supply path, except the overland has to be within four tiles. So like the overland supply path would have to be four tiles. So. Supply wouldn't get through these tiles because he controls that one and he controls that one. So overall, these guys are completely cut off. So that means we roll for surrender on the surrender chart, which is right here. So if you roll a one or a two, you're basically good. 
If you roll a three through six, then you add one to your surrender. Um, and you actually, if the unit is green, you um, add to that roll, which is bad. So right here, yeah, this is all a big group. So um, let's roll for each of these. Oh, double clicked by accident. Um, I rolled a four. Let's see, wrong chart. On a four, it seems like the whole group is going to suffer one. So this is one big group, by the way, because it's like one pocket. So let's add that surrender marker. So they need three of those to surrender because it takes three for a green unit to surrender. And these are all green, as you can see. So with that, that is the end of the American turn. We know we're pretty confident we don't have to check for victory yet because neither side has won. And there's no sudden victory or sudden loss situations except for the end. But... um. No sudden victory or sudden losses in the beginning of the game, at least, I should say. Um, but, yeah, let's get that switched over to number two. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Here. There we go. I'll edit that really quick later. Oh shoot. Whoops. Didn't mean to actually close it. Must be that double clicking problem. I need to get my mouse clicked. Anyway, my mouse checked. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, let me know if you have any feedback or any rules you know off the top of your head that I'm doing wrong. Um, I'm not trying for a hundred percent accuracy. Um, Mostly, I'm trying to stay true to all of the um, major rules and a lot of the minor rules, the ones that I can. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. It'll be fun to play through a whole playthrough of this game for you guys. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.